Hey guys, I'm Marketech Jeje Madatu and welcome back to our Dialogues Masterclass. So we are back and it's been a while that I posted Dialogues tutorial on our YouTube channel. That was already six months ago. I'm sorry with that because we were really caught up with our lighting design projects here in the Philippines. So on this week's episode, I'm going to teach you on how to recreate a more detailed, realistic looking facade using only the basic objects of Dialax Evo. We are not going to use any window elements or we are not going to use any wall elements or other elements on this tutorial because the main objective of this tutorial is that to train you on how to recreate a more complicated objects or a more complicated design using the basic objects of Dialax Evo. But with the columns, balusters we are not going to recreate this in dialax evo we could but apparently we need to use a third party like uh, a third party design software in order to recreate this so for this tutorial we will just going to use 3ds file for these objects just a brief background of this project this is one of our existing project here in the philippines and the lighting design concept of this one was originally recreated in Dialax 4.13 and was rendered through Povray. So that's why I decided to use this project for this tutorial and recreate it in Dialax Evo. And lastly, before we start, for those who wants to recreate and train along with me while watching our step-by-step -step video tutorial, you can actually download the EVO file, the CAD file, and other 3D files of this tutorial. But in return, I need a favor from you guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on our Facebook and Instagram accounts. Send us a screenshot that you have followed our three social media accounts. Email us at dialogsmasterclass at gmail.com and I will send you the link on where to download the files and just in case the instruction is written in the description below. So these are the drawings that we have. We have here the spot details, the site development plan, the roof plan, reflected ceiling plan, floor plan with the furniture layout, the elevation drawings of the Now let's arrange and realign these drawings and let's use the stairs as our guideline. Now let's move these drawings closer to each other. So if you have noticed that the design of the facade is a repetitive design, so we are just going to recreate one column design and one window design, and then we are just going to duplicate this on the plan. And then after that, we are going to recreate the main entry. And of course, the balusters, we are not going to recreate this. We were just going to find 3ds file in the 3d warehouse SketchUp. And lastly, let's duplicate a typical column and window design and also the other details and plans of these.
Now let's align these drawings. Let's add some more guidelines. And then let's add some dimensions. Now let's save this file, but before that we need to purge this file to lessen the file size. Now let's save this file. Now let's open Dialogs. Select Outdoor and Building Planning. Now let's import the CAD file by simply dragging the file in the Dialogs software. Now let's select this corner side of the stairs as our base point because this is where we align the drawings. And then select millimeters as the scale unit because the drawings were done in millimeters or you could probably just check the lens to double check if the scaling is correct. Now as confirmed, the measured length is 0.15 and then it was changed to 0.15 so everything is okay. Now let's click finish. Now let's go to the site tab and let's create a rectangular floor element. Let's create another one. Now let's start recreating the typical column and typical window design. But before we start, we are going to recreate this facade by simply using the default objects of the dialogs. We are not going to use any window elements or wall elements on this recreation because we are just going to show the front facade of this building so we won't be needing those elements so let's start creating a rectangular object by using the extrusion body and let's just duplicate this object and rescale this rectangular object according to the size of the part of size of the object Let's check the height. It's actually 0.193. Let's duplicate. Now let's duplicate these objects onto the other side. Now let's create the center part of the column. Duplicate the rectangular object. Now, actually, the side of the column is 0.15. Let's resize the height of these objects to 0.15. And then the center side will be 0.193. Yep, 0.193. And then let's duplicate this. And let's use this as a subtraction object on the center part of the column. This is going to be a recessed part. So let's probably move this. Um, let's probably assume that the recess part will be 0 0.05. So let's subtract 0 0.193 to 0 0.05. That's going to be 0 0.143. And let's move the object 0 0.143 from the 0z axis. Now let's check the perspective view. Now let's subtract this. And then let's click the center part of the object or the object to be subtracted. And let's go to the copy and arrange tab and subtract. Okay, now let's create the 
tapered side of the center recessed part of the column. Now let's use the the wedge object of the dialog software. Now let's drag this onto the center. Now let's move it. Now let's check on the perspective view if it's oriented accordingly. Now let's rotate this 90 degrees on the zero on the z axis. Now let's move this on the elevation view and let's align this on the recessed part now let's go back to the plan view let's rescale this wedge object rescale the height now let's duplicate this onto the other part and then rotate negative 90 on the z axis now let's duplicate it again rotate it at zero z axis let's check now let's move this on the right side scale duplicate rotate 180 degrees let's check on the perspective view okay we're good on this part of the column now let's create the bottom part of the column but before that i made a mistake now if you have noticed that on the side elevation of the column this outer part of the drawings is actually the center columns of the facade and the inner lines of the elevation is actually the side columns of the facade so let's edit the height of the side part of this column let's check the height 0.129 let's probably use 0.13 edit the height from 0.15 to 0.13 now let's create the inner part of the side part of the column edit the height probably 0.125 duplicate and move it onto the other side let's check on the perspective view okay we're good now let's recreate the bottom part of the column this is actually going to be the center columns of the facade now let's recreate the bottom part duplicate the rectangular object resize check the height 0.243 duplicate it again resize now let's assume the height should be lower than 0.243 so let's use point two four. Now let's duplicate this again. We are not going to recreate the curve part. Let's just use a rectangular object. Scale. Let's probably resize this. And then edit the height. Let's use point two three five let's check on the elevation side okay that's good now let's duplicate this again scale now let's go to the section file let's just probably scale this manually okay now let's duplicate this scale bigger than the previous object scale on the elevation view so this is going to be bigger than the previous object now let's duplicate this again
going back to the elevation view let's scale this lower than the previous object now let's duplicate this again and just do this onto the rest of the objects let's check the height on the elevation drawing 0.193 now let's create a subtraction object uh, probably not a subtraction object because the moldings are protruded from the base part of the column so what we're going to do here is that we are going to trace the molding design let's use draw extrusion body you don't need to exactly follow the curve right click okay it doesn't close let's probably add some more lines more lines uh, right click close polygon and let's re-edit this delete point okay click escape now let's let's rotate this 90 degrees on the y-axis and then let's move this on to the exact location right click scale now let's move this on top of the base part and then duplicate this again duplicate rotate 90 degrees scale duplicate now let's check on the perspective view okay now if you have noticed that the corner part of the moldings are overlapping to each other so what we're going to do is that we are going to create a 45 degree subtraction object in order to smoothen the design of the moldings now let's go back to the plan view let's create a 45 degree subtraction object click on draw extrusion body let's create a rectangular object now let's move this object and rescale it now right click edit basic polygon let's delete one point now let's go back to the elevation view let's check if the square object or the 45 degree object is on top of the base of the column now let's resize this 2.1 and then going back to the plan view let's duplicate this onto the other side and let's rotate it 90 degrees oh no or oh, negative 90 on the z-axis now let's move this onto the other side now let's duplicate this and move it on to the upper side and rotate it at 180 degrees now let's subtract first the lower molding object click on the two first object which is going to be the uh, subtraction objects now let's click on to the second object which is going to be the object to be subtracted now let's go back to the copy and arrange tab and click subtract now let's delete now let's do the uh, subtraction on the upper molding but before we do that let's duplicate this object these objects and we are going to use this on the side moldings now let's click on the first two objects which is going to be the subtraction object and then click on the last object which is going to be the object to be subtracted now click on subtract now let's rotate these objects for the side moldings now let's move these objects exactly to its exact position now let's duplicate again these two subtraction objects 
So I'll see control V and let's move it onto the other side. Rotate it at 180 degrees and then let's snap it on to the exact location. Now let's subtract the first side moldings. Uh, let's click on the first two objects and then click on the last object to be subtracted and click subtract and just do it onto the other side. Okay, now we are done with these moldings of the base of the column. Now let's proceed with the lower moldings of the base of the column. Now let's duplicate this rectangular object and then just move it onto the exact position. Let's check the height. 0.22. Now let's duplicate again this object. Rescale. Let's probably just ignore the curve shape of the molding. Let's just, just let's just use a rectangular object and probably resize it a bit larger than the previous object. And let's rescale this on the side elevation and let's rescale it a bit shorter. Now let's duplicate this object again. Now let's check on the height. 0 0.307. Duplicate again. Let's check the height. It's 0.321. Now let's leave some gap in between the lower object. Duplicate and duplicate onto the next moldings. Check the height. 351. Okay, onto the lower molding. Let's just do the same method that we did on the upper part. We size the height. Check on the height, 436. Let's check on the perspective view. I think this one, I made a mistake on this one. Let's rescale this. Same as this one, I think. Let me check. It's okay. Now, I'm a bit meticulous with this. I'll probably, let's just going to follow this uh, curved design of the moldings. Let's resize this rectangular object now let's create a subtraction object and let's follow the curved design of the molding let's move it on the zero z axis now let's duplicate this onto the other side Rotate 880 degrees on the y-axis. Let's move this onto the snap exact location. Okay, let's check on the elevation view. And let's align this with the other subtraction object. Now let's duplicate this again. And we are going to use this as subtraction object on top of the molding. Now let's rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis. Rotate 90 degrees on the z. Let's check. Okay, let's move it on the exact location. I think we made a mistake on this one.
okay 90 degrees on the y-axis now let's subtract these objects onto that rectangular object molding now let's rescale this first let's probably rescale this a bit a bit bigger than the sub the object to be subtracted now let's select on these three subtraction objects and lastly select the object to be subtracted and now let's click on subtract okay now we have cre created this curved molding and let's probably duplicate this and just le and let's just do the rescaling according to its size 0.343 right click scale let's edit the height 0.343 now let's check on the perspective view i oh, know that's going to be 0 0.436 0.436 now let's double check again on the perspective view okay now we're done with the lower part of the column same as the mid part of the column now let's recreate the uppermost part of the column now let's use again a rectangular object check the height to zero nine just duplicate all the rectangular objects and rescale it according to the exact size and height Let's assume the height on the center part. Uh, let's probably use 0 0.25, 0 0.26. Let's check. Um, probably 0 0.0263. Let's probably just add 0 0.02 from the height on the side moldings. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 
lower part of the column let's probably just combine these moldings go to the cap and range tab and combine and then let's rescale it and then let's probably just combine the other objects oh no okay now let's combine the upper moldings now let's rescale this same as this one it's combined then rescale scale Now let's edit the height of this according to the height of the side columns. 0.15 on the center part. Let's combine these wedge objects. Now let's move it manually on the elevation view. And snap it on to the let's rescale it. Okay. Let's check the height of the side part of the center part. Let's go to the plan view of this. Yeah, this one. It's point one. Let's edit these objects height. To point one, same as the inner part, probably it's assume point zero nine five. Let's check on the perspective view. Let's reduce it again. Probably let's edit it to point zero nine. Okay, now this one, let's edit this. Let's probably just combine these objects and let's just assume the height right click scale now let's do it manually Let's resize it a bit. Or let's just probably check on the elevation view. The maximum height should be 0.2. Let's add 0 0.02. That's going to be 2.02. Okay. Ah, 0 0.202, sorry. Now let's edit the height of the lower moldings. Let's start with this part. Let's check the max the highest or the maximum. Point nineteen. Let's let's edit the height. Point nineteen. Let's move these moldings. Let's check on the perspective view. Now let's go on to this side. Check the height. 0.239. And then this one, let's check. 0.173. On the lower part, which is going to be, let's check the highest part. 0.273 edit the height 0.273 now the lower part Point three three nine, and the lowest part the maximum height or the highest part 0.35 
0.35 now let's check on the elevation view now let's duplicate this column onto the other side now let's snap it on to the exact location let's just do some minor adjustment on this Now let's move this onto the other side. Let's ungroup this object. Click split. Now let's move this onto the other side. Okay, now let's check on the perspective view. Okay, that's fine. Now we're done with the column design of the facade. Let's move on to the window design. Now onto the window design or the typical window design. We don't have much details on to this one except for this elevation I mean, a slight view of the elevation of the upper moldings. And on the plan view, we really don't have detail on this one. So what we're going to do here is that we will just going to assume, we will just going to assume the height of the moldings or the molding design around the window. So let's probably start with the rectangular object. Let's duplicate this scale now let's check the height on the elevation view that's point to 11 duplicate right click scale now for this one we don't really need to make the curve design now adjust the height. Let's check the height of this. 0 0.182. 0 Duplicate. Right click. Scale. Okay. Now we're going to assume the height. Let's just probably manually scale this up on the elevation view. And it's going to be shorter than the previous object. Duplicate. Now let's recreate the side of the window design. Oh, let's edit the height. 0.175. Let's assume it's going to be 0.170. Let's check on the perspective view. Okay, let's reduce it again. Probably let's do it point eighteen. Ah, uh, point sixteen. No, point fifteen. Okay, let's duplicate this. Now let's duplicate another rectangular object. Rescale. This is gonna be the base of this part. Let's edit the height. Probably point. 13 no point 0.1 and let's reduce the height of this mm, probably point 0.15 uh, point 0.14 okay that's good now let's trace the triangular objects duplicate another rectangular object right click edit basic polygon now let's add Let's trace the rectangular part. Let's edit the height. 
let's check it on the perspective view let's probably edit this to the height 2.11 now let's duplicate this and then right click edit basic polygon and let's trace the second rectangular object now let's edit the height 0.12 or no 0.115 now let's check on the elevation view now i think i made a mistake that should be 0 0.105 it should be lower than the previous object okay let's probably edit the first triangular from 0.11 to 0.12 and then the second one 0.105 to 0.11 okay now let's recreate the center part let's duplicate another rectangular object right click edit basic polygon and then let's edit the height let's check on the perspective view that's fine now let's duplicate this again for the subtraction object now let's move this let's assume or probably let's just move it upward as long as the two triangular first two triangular objects will not overlap on the center part let's move a bit okay now click the other object to be subtracted and then let's go to the copy and arrange and click subtract now let's move on to the other moldings now let's duplicate again another rectangular object let's edit the height probably the same height as this one it's 0.175 let's edit this to 1.0.175 let's duplicate scale edit the height on the elevation let's manually edit this duplicate edit the height let's manually edit okay now let's check on the elevation view now let's move on to the center part let's again duplicate another rectangular object right click scale now let's go back to the perspective view and let's assume the height let's probably use 0.1 as the height 0.1 or let's go back to the plan view duplicate for subtraction object okay i don't think we need to do some subtraction on this made a mistake scale then duplicate on the other side now let's do the center part of the window duplicate now let's edit the height um probably let's assume it's going to be 0 0.07 probably 0 0.05 okay let's duplicate again for our subtraction objects Now let's select our subtraction objects. Now click on the object to be subtracted and then go to the copy and arrange tab and click subtract. Uh, before that, before we move on to that, let's undo. Let's actually duplicate this. And then click again this object to be subtracted and then click subtract and let's recreate the windows let's edit the height let's delete these two objects 
Now let's edit the height. Uh, it's going to be okay. Let's double check on the plan. This is actually the window. So let's check the height. That's 0 0.05. So that's going to be 0 0.05. Yeah, 0 0.05. Now let's duplicate this. Add right click scale. Now let's duplicate this again. Now let's do subtraction for this. Now let's edit the height of this, of the window, of the inner window to 0 0.04, probably 0 0.04. And let's move it on the center of the window frame. So 0 0.05 minus 0 0.04, that's going to be 0 0.01. So let's move it 0 0.005 from the 0z zero axis. Okay, let's duplicate this again. And let's trace the uh, subtraction objects. Duplicate. Okay, now let's duplicate again these four objects for our for the glass window. Now let's do the subtraction. Now let's edit the height of the glass. That's going to be the thickness of the glass should be around 0 0.002. And then let's move it on to the center of the window frame. Let's probably use 0 0.01. No, 0 0.00. That's the normal height or the thickness. That's the normal thickness of the glass. Let's probably use 0 0.003. That's it. Now let's combine these four objects. Okay, now let's move on to the second window. That's going to be 0 0.05. Now let's duplicate these first for another subtraction objects. Duplicate again. Now let's duplicate these two objects. And now let's click on the object to be subtracted and click subtract. Now let's edit the height of the window frame, the inner window frame to 0 0.04 and let's move it 0 0.0005 from the 0z axis. Now let's duplicate this again for the subtraction objects. Let's probably, let's just do one window and then we'll duplicate it on the other side. Now let's delete this. Now let's duplicate for the subtraction. Now let's duplicate again these objects for our for the glass of the window. Now let's do the subtraction. Now let's edit the height of the or the thickness of the glass. 0 0.003. Now let's move it on the center of the window frame. Okay, now let's combine these objects. Okay, now let's duplicate this window. I mean, this window. Let's duplicate the other window frames. Let's move on to the other moldings. Okay, now let's edit the height. It should be higher the it should be higher than the previous object. That's gonna be point one. Let's probably use point one zero five. No, let's use point eleven. Okay, let's duplicate this again. 
let's probably assume the height 0 0.107 all right that's fine now let's duplicate this again now let's duplicate this molding for the other side and let's just adjust the location okay now we're done with the center part of the window let's edit let's recreate the lower part i think we just need to duplicate this now let's readjust the size and let's probably assume that the height of this will be 0.14 okay that's good and this one should if the first object is at 0.14 let's edit this 0.135 edit the height let's probably use 0.13 now for this part let's edit this probably the previous one is actually 0.13 now let's use 0.125 now let's duplicate this for the lowest part Now let's give let's put some gap in between the two objects. Okay, now we're done with the window. The next step that we are going to do is that we are going to duplicate and arrange this typical window and column onto the exact location in the facade. Now, but before anything else, since these objects are going to be typical let's apply texture on let's now apply texture onto these objects now what we're going to do is that we're going to duplicate these objects first now let's combine the objects that we could combine let's combine these upper part and then let's combine these objects same as these and the lower the lowest part okay so there's this kind of buggy thing that's happening when you combine this curved object with the rectangular object so what we're going to do is that let's undo the combination of this split or I think that's not a good idea. Let's just click undo or probably let's undo it. Control Z. Control Z again. Now let's probably just combine the rectangular objects. And then let's just leave this as it is. Now as for the window, let's combine the objects that we could combine. Let's combine these and let's combine all the glass of the window now let's combine the window frame or not this now this one let's combine these objects and let's leave the outer frame as it is because the window it's going to be protruded or it's going to be on the wall or it's going to be inserted on the wall so let's probably move this window downward okay that's it 
Now let's apply texture onto these objects. Uh, for this project, I'm just going to use a beige paint. But if you are recreating this, you can actually play around with the textures. It's up to you. So for this, I'm going to use a beige paint. Let's combine the moldings. There's an overlapping object. Let's delete this. Okay. Now let's add texture onto the molding. Now let's go to the frame of, I mean, to the window. I think this is going to be a part of the window frame. Now let's move this frame. Let's apply texture onto the window frame. Okay, now let's probably just move it first on top of the floor element. And then let's add a glass texture onto this glass window. Now let's go to the create color material and then adjust the red to 255 adjust the green to 255 and the blue color to 255 that's actually the standard properties of a white color or a white paint now let's select transparent on the material type and let's edit the reflection factor to 10% and then the degree of transmission to 90% and then the reflective index to 1.5 that's actually the typical clear glass properties based on the uh, dialax uh, default property of a clear glass now let's apply this texture Okay, now we can combine the window. Let's try to combine all of these. Ah, uh, no, we cannot combine because we're going to uh, adjust the location of the window based on the plan. So let's probably just combine the window frame and the window. Okay, now we, could, now we can combine these objects. Let's check. Okay, that's it. Now we can combine the other objects into one. Let's try. Okay, that's good. Now let's duplicate these objects and rearrange it on the exact location in the facade. Now let's duplicate the column first. Let's start first with the column. Control C, Control V. Let's move this on to the exact location. Duplicate. Now let's apply texture on the side columns. done duplicating the column let's go let's duplicate and arrange the typical window
now let's before we duplicate this window onto the rest of the window let's probably move the window frame and the window according to the plan now let's check the distance of the window from the outer wall that's going to be 0 0.025 let's create or duplicate a rectangular object that's going to be our guide to move the window 0 0.025 from the 0z axis edit the height 0 0.025 now let's move this below the moldings okay now let's move the window 0 0.025 from the moldings okay now let's delete the object that we used as our guide delete now let's duplicate these window okay now we are done with this we are going to recreate the molding on the upper part of the wall now what we're going to do is that we are going to use the elevation or the section drawing and we are and and we are going to trace this side part of the molding let's duplicate a rectangular object and then let's move it on to the corner now let's right click edit let's leave as it is the height at one meter now let's rotate this 90 degrees on the x-axis no uh 90 degrees on the y-axis let's check on the perspective view now let's move this object on top of the floor element okay now let's duplicate this onto the exact location on the facade now let's scale this up or resize it now let's duplicate this onto the other side now let's check on the perspective view Okay, that's it. Let's add texture onto this. Okay, now we're done with this part of the facade. Let's go to the plan view and then let's start recreating the walls and the inner part of the building. 